Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday Trumpet. I'm glad that you saw fit to join me today in this very important uh, message and broadcast. Amen. Wherever you are today, we are so very thankful for you. I was uh, uh, looking at a, a particular passage of Scripture that I believe the Lord had laid on my heart to share with you today, but uh, just so happens uh, as I was flipping, there was a particular uh, passage that caught my eye in uh, Second Corinthians, and I just kind of become deadlocked on that, and I, that's where we're going to uh, uh, begin uh, today. Amen. Let me encourage you to get you some uh, pen and paper, take notes, <clears throat> and uh, judge everything I preach and teach to you based upon the Word of God. Amen. Good to see you guys today. Amen. So, Let's just go ahead and go right to the Word. <clears throat> Amen. And, and let's let's go over to 2 Corinthians. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 12. Amen. I know, uh, let me say this. You know, I've attempted in times past to, to, to preach uh, a series and uh, on different things. And, uh, and I'm... It's, Please understand, it's not anything at all wrong with that. I'm not saying that at all. I know Brother James and I on Wednesday night, we've attempted to try to preach a series of studies on a particular book or, or what have you, and it's needful, and I'm not, I understand, I'm not speaking against that by any means. It just seems, it just seems that the Lord just deals with me in particular uh, when there's a, when there's a subject, when there's an issue, or when there's something going on in the body it just seems that he impresses upon me this is just me speaking amen this is just how the lord deals with me and he just impresses upon me to deal with a particular subject matter uh and, and something that's important <clears throat> or necessary in the body of christ to 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 deal with and today we we, we continue to do that amen and as always, we preach, we teach, and we warn. Why so much warning? Because there's so much deception, especially in this final hour of the church age. And uh, the Bible bears witness to that, amen. The, Paul said that the men will wax, grow worse and worse, uh, being deceived and going about deceiving others. And uh, that's what deceivers do. They deceive others, amen. And our responsibility as pastors and... and uh, uh, in the church is to 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 be sure the people that are in, in the body, the blood bought church, are, are clinging to the cross and that their faith is rooted and grounded <clears throat> in uh, the the finished work of Christ on the cross. That which God honors, because He won't honor anything else, it doesn't make any difference what anybody else says. <clears throat> We're presenting to you what the Bible says. That's the reason we desire that you judge what we preach based upon the Word of God and uh, not what someone else is saying because there's a lot of people out there that's competing for your faith. They're desiring for you to follow them just as uh, the Bible warns us of in uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 30 when the Bible says there be those among us, right here among us, the blood-bought, uh, the cross preaching camp. There be those that will be, that will rise up among us, that will um, go about preaching a perverted gospel. It's perverted, but the people buy off on it because it sounds right. And then also, they have uh, uh, they have been deceived into thinking that these particular preachers they're right all the time. So, and that's dangerous. Amen. We always judge every every message. Uh, always based upon the Word of God because ministers change, amen? They, they, they change. They become influenced, just like we're trying to uh, prevent the church from becoming influenced by uh, another gospel, you know, one that's, the one that's apart from the cross. If, if that minister or ministry is presenting what they call the gospel, a message, even about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, this is to sow, sow the the de deceptive part of it, even if it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, about Jesus, but it's apart from his blood, it's apart from the cross, it's apart from Calvary, and emphasis upon that, amen, then it's, 
actually another gospel, amen. It's not, to, it's not, to, it's, it's a distraction is what it is, amen. And these distractors are using uh, the name of Jesus to distract you from what he did at Calvary. And that is the place that you find the power and the presence of God as we uh, brought out <clears throat> Sunday morning, amen. Those that are those that are after the truth, those are clinging to the cross. They're, the fruit that they'll bear is that they're always looking to the cross. They're glorying in the cross. Amen. And uh, it's not so much because of something that Simon, that the Apostle Paul said. It's because it's it's within us. Amen. We gravitate. There's a constant pull toward righteousness. We we gravitate. We feel at home clinging to the cross. Our, our ears have been tuned in to hear about the, the message of the cross. That's all we want to hear. Amen. Our mind has been changed. You know, one of those that calls us a, a cult and calls me a cult later, he, they say, well, all you're doing is brainwashing the people. And I said, well, you got that right. Uh, our mind is to be renewed. Amen. We're to, to take on the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ was all about Calvary. Amen. So the old has to be washed out and the new brought in. And it's only brought in when, when our faith is anchored in the cross. That's the life-changing experience. And it continues to change our lives. Amen. Daily. All the time. But our mind has to be renewed. Amen. To keep our mind upon what God has offered us uh, through his son on the cross. Not only his death, but understanding with, that we died with him. That's the wisdom of God. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. It's the only way he could live. That's the only way Christ can live in us is for that uh, fallen son of Adam to die on the cross. He has to be crucified. That old man has to be laid to rest, amen. Sin nature. We're given victory over that because of the blood of Jesus and what he did at Calvary and our faith in that alone. Amen. So now Christ lives within us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the source of life now is not my own willpower, my own ability, my own stinking thinking. Amen. But the Christ lives in me and I I trust solely upon him. Amen. One of the things, I think it was Sister Stephanie, amen, in the camp meeting said, you know, I trust in Jesus what he did at Calvary because I can't trust in me. And we have to come to a place to where we no longer realize that we are not uh, trustworthy. The, the one that we put our trust in, Christ and him crucified, amen, he is our hope, he is our help, he is He is that uh, that grace, amen, it's all wrapped up in him, and it's released into our life through faith in what he did at Calvary, at the cross, it's where he, Jesus, becomes to us everything that he's ever declared himself to be and everything that the Bible declares him to be, that is where he becomes all of that to us there, is supplied, amen, where the blood is supplied, the power and the presence of God is supplied to us. He works through us, amen, we experience the presence of God, amen. If you want to experience the presence of God and the true moving of God, true righteousness and holiness in, in everything that the Bible says we need, how about anchoring your faith in the cross and uh, remain determined to know nothing else, amen, stay at Calvary, stay there at the cross and let God work in you. Let there be an operation of God in your life. Amen. So our mind has to be uh, renewed. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute, uh, maybe. Amen. But I want to begin reading where the Lord just kind of brought me to this morning even. As I thought we would go a, a different way. You know, the Lord knows what the people needs to hear. Uh, and I'm always seeking what he would have me to say. Lord, help me to be sensitive to your leading. Help me to be sensitive to the leading of your of your Holy Spirit because I might think within myself what people need to hear, but you know, amen. Just help me to be a sensitive to you, the leading of the Holy Spirit and speak what you would put in my mouth, what you would have me to say to the people today, amen. And that's what true ministry is all about. True ministry is not, uh, our, our true ministry is always uh, uh, having a servant's heart and mind toward the people. 
What does the people need? What do they need to hear at, at any given time? And rest assured, uh, at any given time, we need to understand and hear the, the message of the cross because the cross, the, the message of the cross is the whole counsel of God. We don't preach the cross and the whole counsel of God. We preach the cross as the whole counsel of God because that is what we need to hear. If God's counseling us, on behalf of any specific need in our life, whatever it might be. He's, uh, he's, he's speaking to us about what he's done for us through the death of his son on the cross, amen. Romans eight thirty two. how shall he not with him, uh, Christ in him crucified, amen. The one that he gave us, Christ in him crucified, how shall he not with him also uh, freely give us all things that pertains to life and godliness, amen. All things freely. It was Simon Peter that, that added to that somewhat in First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He said, by his divine power, and it's only found at, at the cross, for the preaching of the cross, it is the power of God, amen. To those that are perishing, they say it's foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the, it is the power of God, amen. Faith in the cross, and Simon Peter said, amen, by his divine power, amen, uh, we have received all things that pertains to life and godliness. What do we have need of? And I don't want to, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to turn that into this one-stop shopping idea. Amen. I, I, I'm not turning God into a glorified bellhop, amen. But nonetheless, he has promised us Christ is that promised land, amen, Christ is that land that we're entering into and uh, that we rely upon and put our hope in, amen, for all things that pertains to life and God. So I've learned that I, uh, over, over a span of time, you learn, amen, to depend less and less upon the this world and more and more upon God and what he's done for us through the death of his son, amen. Let me read this verse of scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 11, and let me just begin uh, with verse 12. A few verses of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 12. And Paul said, "What the, but what I do, that will I do. And uh, to, to me, you know, and sometimes I just bypass the notes and I say, Lord, what are you speaking to me and, and how would you like me to present this? But to me, Paul is just saying here, look, you, you know who I am. Uh, you know my apostleship. You know I'm an ambassador of Christ. You know my message. Uh, you you know you know I preach Christ. You know my ways. I brought you into remembrance of my ways time and time and time again. You know who I am, and uh, who I am, and who I've always been since that Damascus Road uh, experience is who I will continue to be and who you will always find me being. I'm determined to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You will find me uh, in that righteous judgment to the, uh, the day I draw my last breath. And we sure see that in Second Timothy, amen, when he wrote to Timothy and said, uh, well, I fought a good fight, Timothy. Praise God, I finished my course and, and I have kept the faith, and the, the faith is always faith in the blood, his blood, Christ in him crucified, amen, and he kept it all the way to the end, amen, and, and a true minister, that is his heart today, yes, it has to hit home with us, us first, we have to eat it first, as Brother James Wilkin always says, amen, but a true minister is, is attempting to get people to stay on the course, to maintain proper faith in the faith that God's given us, the object that he's given us, the faith he gave us and the object that he gave us to put it in, amen. We're tempting to, for people to be established in that faith, to be stabilized there and to not be influenced by the many voices out there and the, not so much in the world as it is in the church land. Amen. To turn from vain words, vain voices, and those that are trying to distract and deceive, and there are many out there. There are many voices, as I've already said, that are attempting, that are competing desires of your attention and your faith. Amen. But they are distractors. They're deceivers. And as I always say, those that know the truth 
know who's telling the truth. Amen. Praise God. So let me read this again. Wherefore, uh, verse 12, but what I do, that will I do. I will continue to be the one that uh, you know me by because no doubt this man of God has seen people change. Amen. We have, you have. Those who are listening, I see your names popping up. We have seen people change. Amen. Well, what caused it? Well, they they gave their ear to that strange woman of Proverbs chapter 7, amen, where it says even the, the some of the mighty and strong men were found in her bed, amen. They fell victim to the strange woman, which is a, a, a type and a picture of false doctrine and false preachers, amen. So don't take it lightly when you hear me and other ministers speak these things, Amen. Don't be so puffed up and prideful. Take heed lest you be one of those that fall. We, we must always guard our heart, guard our faith, be brought into remembrance of the, the gospel message that, uh, that we're hearing over and over and over. And it's repetitive by design. Amen. Because we need to hear it over and over. We need to be reminded Amen. The mind of God, the mind of Christ. In the mind of Christ, ladies and gentlemen, amen. Yes, he did miracles. He healed the lame, the eyes open, deaf ears open. He did all fed the multitude on the hillside. But the mind of Christ was to get to Calvary's cross and lay down his life and shed his precious blood so you and I could be saved and then live saved and live victorious in this present life, in this present evil world and among a religious community that's waxing worse and worse being deceived and going about deceiving others. Can they be changed? Can they be affected? Can they be influenced? Yes, if you do do not allow them to influence you. That's the key. Amen. Don't allow them to be influenced you. I'm determined to know nothing to save Jesus Christ. You can bring it. You can say whatever you want to, but the only way that we can influence them is to remain at Calvary's cross and preach no other message. If we go to where they are, if we go to the place where the uh, distractors and deceivers are camped out, amen, We, we not only do we put ourselves on a road to destruction and uh, lose the hope of salvation, but now we are influencing others. Paul said, I'm going to remain doing what I've always done, preach the same message. There's no need to change. The power of God is wrapped up in the cross. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 through 7. Amen. Paul spoke about the vain words there. What are vain words? There are any words that are presenting anything else other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. They're vain words, empty words. They bring no power, no hope, no help, no grace, no salvation. You won't find the operation of God in those words. And so he said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, he said, Be not partakers with them. Amen. Be not partakers with them. Amen. We're not to stand with them. We're not to be partners with them. We're not to be buddies and pals with those that are preaching and putting emphasis on something other than faith in the cross. Even if they're mentioning and preaching and talking about Jesus. Amen. The gospel is Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the cross that makes Christ Amen, the one that bears the gospel. Amen, apart from the cross, it's another Jesus. It's another gospel. It's of another spirit. It's deceiving, greatly deceiving, however, and so much more in this final hour. Amen, where uh, seducing spirits are running rampant in the body of Christ. Amen, the only thing that's going to push back the powers of darkness and, and defeat and overthrow these seducing spirits and give us victory over every power in principality. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15 is for that devil to see our faith anchored in the cross and for him to realize and see a determination within us to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified because there alone is he whipped. There alone is he spoiled. All of his strategies and schemes that he desires to carry out with us have been spoiled when he 
sees faith. There he has to flee. Amen. How there he has to flee. The only thing that the true believer should be seeing out of the devil is his backside as he is fleeing. Paul said in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, not reading these entirely, but he said there, identify, mark those that are bringing in another gospel contrary to that which you have learned. Amen. He didn't say, but he, again, he didn't say make buddies and pals with them. He said avoid them. So we see God through the apostle Paul telling us number one, Ephesians chapter five, verse six and seven, be not partakers with them. Romans 16, 17, 18, he said avoid them. And then in 2 Timothy chapter three and verse five, he said there be those that will have a form of godliness, they have an outward appearance, an outward show. It looks right, sounds right, amen, but it's not right because the emphasis of their message is not the righteousness of God which is wrapped up in the gospel and the gospel is the cross, amen. So God again through the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, he said to turn away from them, amen, they have a they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof and the power of true godliness and righteousness and, and holiness and all of that is wrapped up in, it's in Jesus, but we don't enter it, we cannot enter into it apart from faith in the cross. That's where we're baptized into the righteous one, the holy one, amen. That's where we're baptized into those things that God says, I require of you, but said, I'm not going to require anything of you, speaking of uh, us, the believer, I'm not going to require anything of you that I don't give you or offer you. And he offered it all to us and gave it all to us through his son, Jesus Christ. But we can only enter into it through faith in the cross. He is our holiness, our righteousness, and our godliness. Amen. The Bible says without the holiness, you cannot see God. So God says, I don't want you to perish. It's not my will that any should perish or live without victory in their daily walk in life. I'm going to give you that holiness that I require. It's going to be in my son, Jesus Christ. And then behold, I'm going to explain through the Apostle Paul and it, how you can enter into that. Amen. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. And uh, let, me, let me rephrase that through the word of God, amen. The Apostle Paul came and he made it tremendously clearer and, and this is how I and so many have received the understanding of the, the, the necessity of faith in the cross. It was through the teachings of the Apostle Paul where it opened up to me and so many will have that testimony today, amen. Without the, the teachings of the Apostle Paul, especially Romans 6, 7, and 8, you really can't understand the scriptures. You might be able to quote them and uh, the Old Testament is just nothing more than a history lesson until you understand that it's all about Christ and him crucified and our death with him on that cross, died with him, buried with him, and raised up with him into newness of life. And then from that point in time, it's a daily walk in a relationship with him through daily faith, amen. Deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me and do it daily, he said, amen. And taking up that cross is identifying with the place that our faith should be in, amen. You know, uh, for years, amen, for years I would read about that, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, preached about it Sunday, that Ark of the Covenant. I thought, man, it, that's, that's, a, that's a great thing, all of that, you know, and that's, that's a beautiful thing that God had Moses build, amen, but I did not understand that it was a type of the Christ and all of those uh, pieces of that Ark and the instruments in the tabernacle and the wilderness was speaking not only of the person Christ, but it identified with what he did on the cross. Sunday, we brought it out, that ark of the covenant, which was uh, the same thing uh, at Christ. It was it was likened unto Christ on earth. It was likened unto uh, Christ through the cross to us today, amen. Uh, but that ark, amen, it, they had, it had four rings on each corner. It had a ring on each corner, amen. And the, the Levites, 
amen, which are the ministers in the temple that, that handled the, the sacrifice and, and ministered in the blood ministered in the blood, amen, and for that ark to be moved, and we're moving with God, you see, amen, so that ark, it wasn't put in a place and was just always left there, the, the Israelites would travel, amen, and, and then the, the Levites would put staves, which is just a, a, a wooden pole, so to speak, staves through those rings, one on the four corner, and they would, the, the Levites would lift that ark up, the ark being a type of Christ, Amen. And they would lift that ark up and they would carry it on the shoulders. And so I did not see and know and it could not envision that that was a picture of the cross. But now, amen, my mind has been changed, it's been renewed taking on the mind of Christ through faith in the cross, amen. And, and now I see what a beautiful, and this throughout the word of God, what a beautiful picture of the person Jesus Christ and his cross and how important those staves and how important the cross is to us. And the Bible says those staves, those poles that was carried upon the Levites were to never to be removed. They were to remain in those rings which speaks of the the love of God. Amen. They were to remain in those rings attached to the, the, the Ark of the Covenant which speaks of Christ and Him crucified. So what does that mean? That means our faith is to remain in Jesus Christ and Him crucified always, all the time. Amen. It's a daily walk. Deny yourself and take up the cross as the Levites did. Amen. Christ and Him crucified. Jesus said in John 12 and 32, amen, he said, if I, amen, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And verse, the next verse says, this spake he of his death, amen. And so we see the, the cross throughout the, ver throughout the Bible, throughout the verses, amen. Jesus said, it's written to me, amen. The Psalms, the prophets, the, the, uh, the, the law, it's all about me, who I am and what I would do at Calvary. And I've learned when I see the name Jesus, when Jesus said, believe upon me, he was preaching the cross, amen. He was pointing people to what he would do at Calvary. There's no belief, there's no faith that God will recognize and honor apart from what he did at Calvary, amen. Our faith is to be in his blood, amen. That's what the Bible teaches over and over and over and over. We only find peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians chapter one and verse 20. Lo and behold, let me get back to my scripture. So it says there, but what I do, that will I do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that were in they glory, amen. Uh, you know, that speaks to me, uh, Pastor Wayne Voss, uh, this is the Lord speaking to me, amen. Be sure, amen, that your faith lines up with the word of God as well, amen. Be sure that you order your walk. Be sure that, that you are taking up the cross daily. Be sure that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life, to mortify the deeds of the flesh and to, and to, uh, to, to bust up things in your life that ought not be there. Be sure that you have made yourself an example after the example of the Apostle Paul, amen, for people to see the fruit of God working in your life, amen. It has to start in the, it has to start right here with me, God working me. God changed me. God changed my heart. Lord, let Christ be seen in me. Let, let old Wayne Voss be found dead. Let me fade away and let Christ be presented. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It has to be Paul. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the prophet said, let me decrease so that Christ may increase. Amen. It's all about the people. Amen. It's all about the benefit of the people. Paul said, oh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and 12, I think it is, amen, said, death has worked in me. Death works in us. Death has worked in me. Amen. Death has worked in me. It has reduced me, amen, to bring about life in you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, if 
my uh, dependence upon this world, amen, my desires for uh, fame, my, de my uh, desires to be promoted, my desires for uh, personal agendas, my desires for, uh, you know, for Wayne Voss to be recognized, all of that, amen, and I I'm still searching for a word that I want to use, but I can't find it, eh? but all of that has to be nailed to the cross so that we can become servants of God and present to the people the only thing that can help them. In the day and time of the Apostle Paul, eh, personal ambition, amen, has to be nailed to the cross, amen, our ambition, amen, and, and, I, and I can relate to that in the beginning, amen, I was ambitious, oh, I want to, oh, Lord, let me be surrounded with many people. You know, when we came to Greenwood, Mississippi, the what was in my mind, well, we're going to go there and we're going to save the whole town and uh, the Delta. Everybody's, everyone's going to be flocking to the church that uh, that we have over here, amen, and that type of thing. But I found out, you know, that that was just really personal ambition. It was really more about me than the will of God. So, you know, after a, after a while, you know, the... All of that just kind of, the Lord just, he, he kind of changed my mind about all of that, amen. And I soon learned, amen, that, uh, hey, this, this, the message of the cross, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me personally, and my wife, she bear testimony to that, amen. The, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me is for me to see and understand that the cross is the gospel, amen. I, I soon found, amen, that nobody really wanted it much around here except me and a few others, amen. And so uh, that ambition that I had, amen, to, to grow a great ministry, build a big church, and have a great following, it just kind of uh, faded away, but God showed me, amen, above and beyond that ambition, the greatest thing that uh, that we could do as ministers or be found doing as ministers is simply lifting him up, preaching the cross, amen. He said, if I be lifted up, let me do the drawing, let me be, let me do the building. And said, and, and he reminded me, said, you know, Preacher Wayne, you might not ever have but just a handful of followers, just a handful of people surrounding you. And if there's one thing that I have learned, that's that's right, amen. If you're preaching the cross, preaching it exclusively, you can you can mark off a huge following. You can uh, you can. There's not going to be we're not going to fill your pocketbooks up by that preaching the cross either, amen. Uh, and that is where you're going to be found when the novelty has been worn off, amen? When the novelty is worn off, the popularity's gone, the new thing is no one's no longer excited about the new thing. It was a new thing at the time, amen, because we never heard. We never, I, when we came here, I, didn't, I never knew that there was such a thing as a message of the cross, Amen. I didn't understand it. Amen. But once it was revealed to me, I said, wow, that's the answer. Amen. To what I've been looking for. Amen. And, I, and there was a resolve that took place. I, and you know, I, Paul, like Paul, now determined to know nothing else but that. Though none follow me. Amen. If, it, if, it, if, it's, if I'm stripped down to none following me, I'm still determined to go on in the message of the cross. And I know that's the determination Paul had. And, and because he was saying, well, everybody over in Asia has left me. Demas has left me, having loved this present world. Amen. There's, there's been a dispute over there in Jerusalem, and Barnabas is gone. Amen. And, and, and so all of those people leaving, but nonetheless, his resolve was to continue to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And this is when you come to the place to where you understand more of the reality of the of enduring sound doctrine amen enduring sound doctrine are you really sold out to the cross amen if you are god amen will uh, through his grace 
will see to it that you're able to endure the stripping of your personal ambitions. And uh, though all of that stuff had good intentions, it sounded good. Amen. It wasn't of God. God brought us here to, to minister to a small group of people, to minister to them. And lo and behold, somehow along the way, uh, we found our way onto Facebook and social media, YouTube. Next thing you know, here I am, an old country preacher from the hills of Tennessee down here, actually uh, ministering to the entirety of the whole world, at least to those that would log on and drink of the water of life freely. That's the beautiful thing about social media. I know it's a lot of nonsense and evil on there, but it is a great opportunity to impact um, uh, humanity, amen, the world with the gospel, amen. So we're thankful for that today, that God would allow uh, me and my wife and, and, and this group of, the group of people that God has surrounded us with over in Greenwood to, 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 to be, uh, uh, have a part, a small part in what God is doing in this final hour. Oh, what a beautiful thing. I'm just thankful today that he allows me to be a part. Hallelujah. Amen. That's shouting grounds right there. God has allowed me to be a part. He found me in the gutter lost and saved me to the uttermost. Now, let me get back to my text here. I could go on and on. Praise God. Amen. That wherein they glory, amen, found even as we. Amen. And, and, and I know that it's dealing with, you know, tying that with money right here. It says that they aren't interested in your money. They, they in other words, they conduct themselves as such. But if the, the, the reason ministries, amen, that are not preaching the, the cross, the reason they're interested in a following and they want a following, they want your attention is because they want it in your pocketbook. That's what it's all about, amen. And it says, if they aren't interested in your money, let them conduct themselves as we do and not take your money. So Paul said, if, if they're not interested in your money, if they're not interested in your following for that reason, amen, uh, stop giving and we will see, amen, whether or not they're true apostles and true brethren because when you cut off the money, amen, these will leave, amen. Paul said, we're gonna show up if we don't get a dollar. We're gonna show up if you don't offer us a mud hut to live in. We'll just sleep out under the stars. We're gonna show up and bring the gospel. We're not looking for anything that you can do for us and that's where most of the, uh, I'm going to use the word leadership where they're not really leaders at all. You know, that word leadership is, is should not be used among us that are in the faith. It should be pastors, amen. We should be pastors. But nonetheless, leaving that alone for right now, those uh, false apostles, false brethren, and, and, and so-called leaders, Amen. Uh, it, it, you know, let me let me just bring it to home. If you stop, Amen. If you cut out the love offerings and the paychecks, think about it. If you stop the paycheck, because there's a lot of money to be made in ministry. There's a lot of money to be made in ministry, amen. But if you cut all of that out, to stop all the love offers, stop all the paychecks, then we'll see those that are left standing. Then we'll know, like Paul is saying here, amen. I'm not after that. I come because I care about your soul. I love you and your family. I love you and your family, your little, your little children. I love you. I come and, and I come bearing the marks of Jesus on my body. Amen. Not having a home, not having a place to sleep, not having any money in my pocket. Amen. At times he made tents, amen, just to be able to uh, survive. Amen. And, 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 and it's just, but he did all all of that for his love for the body. He wanted everyone to know and understand and walk in this glorious gospel that had been revealed to him. All oh, praise God. Amen. That's the reason we have these camp meetings. That's the reason we're on social media because we want everyone to know and understand and walk in this glorious gospel and this liberating truth that the Lord has showed us. Amen. And it is is the message of the cross. 
Amen. It is Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the cross that was revealed to me. It's the cross that opened it all up. Hallelujah. It's the preaching of the cross that makes the difference in our lives. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, it was the message of the cross. It, it wasn't Pentecost that, that, that really, it wasn't the Pentecost that changed me, amen. Yes, I was baptized in, with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues many years ago, amen. But there was still something within me that I found could not be satisfied with that. Yes, I was being told over and over and over constantly, now that you're speaking in tongues, now that you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, and, and I speak in tongues most every day, amen. But I also understand that's not the avenue of victory that God has given the believer, amen. As important and needful as that prayer language is, amen, that is not the avenue of victory. Amen, that God has given me. So I was being told now that you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, now you have entered, amen, a realm of victory, amen. But I was still smoking them Campbell cigarettes about that long, no filter, amen. And I couldn't get shed of them. I was speaking in tongues, smoking a camel every day, amen. I thought, well, it's got to be something more to it than this. Hey Amen. Uh, it's got to be something more to it than this. But there was always a hungering. There was always a, a, a yearning. There was always a, a panting within me like that deer that pants for the water. Hey Amen. I, I just, uh, there has to be more here in, in, in the word of God. In my prayer every day, Lord, show me. Reveal to me. Send somebody. It makes no difference. Send somebody to trigger uh, the understanding that I need to be able to find victory over the ills of my life, the sin in my life. Show me. Reveal it to me. And I would pray that every day. Every day. All for years and years and years. And I about ready to give up, and then lo and behold, one day I was sitting in that little S10 pickup that I have, still got it, got 250,000 miles on it, still driving it, amen, I was sitting in that truck one day, amen, and I heard the man say, amen, he said, the answer to what you are seeking is found only in the cross, and it's just like a light switch come on, and and I'm not I'm not sitting here repeating something you probably heard somebody else say. I'm telling you what happened. I'm I'm a, I'm a telling you <laughs> what God did in my life. And that moment, that moment, it's like a light come on, and it was revealed to me. The answer is in the cross. I did not fully understand it, but I said I'm going to keep digging till I understand it fully. But I knew that that cross was my answer, and at that moment, my faith shifted, amen, from all the religious activities and all the, even the good things that I, and right things that I were involved in, that I thought I needed to look to and put my hope in and my faith in, amen, they were right, they were good, amen, they was in the Bible, but however, victory wasn't found in any of that, victory is only found in the cross, and then think about that, and if I ever get to read it, think about that, and then where the majority of the the the, the church is today that, that came into the message of the cross, but now they've been influenced by vain words, false apostles, false brethren, false teachers, they, they've risen up in, within the body, very deceptive, risen up among us, but they came, they, they won over our trust, amen, by deception, amen, and, and they came and pre began to preach a perverted word, and so many fell victimized to that perverted word, because just like the strange woman, it sounded right, it looked right, and those seducing spirits know how to make you feel right and feel good in the midst of deception, amen, where many strong men, many uh, mighty men have fallen over the years, and we've seen 
it just recently, amen. So as deception, deception is great, we have to have a determination to be more established, more stabilized, a greater determination. I'm more determined now than I ever have been. Amen. As it pertains to what is indeed the gospel, and it is the cross. Hallelujah. I've experienced the operation of God in my life. I've experienced him working in my life. Amen. I know in whom I believe. Amen. Does that make me some type of super Christian? No. What it does, it humbles me, amen, to know that I'm still nothing apart from Christ. He said, you can do nothing without me, but it causes me to realize that apart from the cross and what Jesus has done for me, I am a weak individual, but I have found strength in my weakness and that strength, that ability, that grace, everything that I need, and even the even uh, the desire for sin, amen, victory over even the desire is found at Calvary. All oh, praise the Lord. The cross is the answer, amen. If we would just turn off the, the, the and throw out the antenna, amen, of everything that we're listening to and learn to listen to those and there are few, but there are a few, amen. As I say all the time, people don't hear this. They want to say, well, you think you're the only one that knows the gospel. No, that's not true. If you say that, you're not listening to us. You're just speaking preconceived things that are actually lies, and you're, you're actually undermining the ministry of the cross and the ministry of the cross, amen. But we all say it all the time. We're not the only ones that preaches this truth. But we are preaching the only truth, and that only truth is Christ and him crucified. Apart from that, it's not the gospel, amen. Praise God. Thankful for these uh, men that's coming up in the, the ranks, amen, that's coming up and preaching the message of the cross with great determination. We've seen people fall away, but we've seen you come in. The apostle Paul experienced that in his life. Amen. People would leave him, but then there would be those that would rise up. All of those in Asia left. Amen. Demas left me, but he said there was a time when he said, and I'm sure there was others, but just I'm reminded of, he said, bring me Mark because he is now profitable for the gospel, amen. There's those that leave, there's those that come in, those that'll be raised up, amen. Praise God. I thank God for what he's doing in this final hour in the church age. I'm thankful to be a part of it, amen. You be speaking about a moving of God. Grab a hold of the cross and move with him, amen. The only way you can experience a move of God is to cling to the cross. Enter into that place of death and be raised up into newness of life. Amen. Let there be a brain washing where you now have the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Be cleansed of all that old stuff that you was clinging to. Um, it was, that reminds me. <laughs> Every verse of scripture reminds me of something else, but that reminds me of, of 2 Corinthians. I don't know if I'm going to read my text or not. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, just a, a page over in verse 4. Said, Paul said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not man devised. They're not of this world. They're not out of the uh, out of religion. You know what religion is? Religion is man reaching up to God through his attempts, strategies, and his willpower and the things that he's doing. And looks good, very religious. I just call it religious calisthenics. But true Christianity is God reaching down to man through his son, what he did at Calvary. Let me cling to what God is doing. Amen. Praise God. So he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When I read that, I think of any and every stronghold that the enemy might have on you, on your mind, on your life. Every, every stronghold and every curse was broken at Calvary, amen. People say, well, I guess I got to just go on and be a, 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 a Bud Dumber drinker the rest of my life because my daddy was or my mama was. Amen, that's not so. 
that curse was broken at Calvary. Every curse, the curse of the broken law, family curses, it was all broken at Calvary. You can be delivered from every bit of it, amen, and you have been delivered from every bit of it if your mind will be renewed to believe what has already been done, amen. Here we have it in 2 Corinthians 10, 4. And he said, uh, the, the pulling down of strongholds by the enemy. And even in our own mind, amen, those things that we conjure up, those things that we make up in our mind, the things that we think, that's the reason we're so important, so important that we understand we are to renew our mind and have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ was to get to Calvary. I got to get to Calvary. Well, I, that's ours too, amen. Ours should be, I got to stay at Calvary. I got to stay at Calvary. I got to cling to that cross. I got to drop anchor in that pool of blood, amen, that cleansing blood at the foot of the cross. I've got to stay at the cross, amen. There you experience the operation of power of God. No place else. He's not obligated to work any place else. It's, uh, it's God, is the only place that it's legal, if I can say it for him, for God to work, though he could work anywhere, but he, he, will, he refused to work outside of the parameters and the platform of our faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Romans 8 and 2, for the law of the Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's speaking of the cross, Romans 6 and 3. Don't you know so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? That's how we entered into it right there through the cross, Romans 6 and 3. Look at it, amen. Baptized into Jesus, baptized into his death. It took place at Calvary, and it takes place with us the moment that we believe and we can walk in it daily, always, if our faith will remain in that redeeming place. The cross, hallelujah. So look what he said there, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. He said, casting down imagination. See these imaginations? Guess what? Even with the best of us, it can begin to flood our mind. Amen. Then why would Paul say in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 through 7, to a church of believers, don't be partakers with them. Stand apart from them. Preach, yes, but don't camp out with them. Amen. Why would Paul say in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, those that have come preaching another gospel, he said, avoid them. Amen. Avoid them. Preach to them, yes, but avoid them. We don't camp out with them. Amen. We don't make buddies in piles with them. Amen. We don't march with them. We, we, if we do, they will influence us. I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. We're to influence them through the preaching of the cross. Amen. We do that at a distance. We pray. Yes, we love them. Amen. Yes, we love them. Amen. But loving people doesn't mean we embrace what they're doing. Forgiving people doesn't mean, forgiving those that hurt us doesn't mean that we, that means that we begin to embrace what they're doing. No, we forgive their, them hurting us, amen. Jesus said, amen, even those that drove nails through his hands, forgive them for they know not what they do. The stoning of Stephen, even, even unto death. Here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, a Christ follower. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do, amen. But that doesn't mean that we go their way. Paul said, 2 Timothy 3 and 5, turn away from them. They look right, sound right. They have a form of godliness, but it's just an outward hole. There's no substance. There's no inner mass. There's no grain. There's nothing on the inside. It's just a hole that looks right. Amen. He said, turn away from those who have a form of and not only show of godliness, but denying the power thereof where true godliness comes from, which is the cross. And he said, don't make buddies and pals with them. Don't be partakers with them. Avoid them and turn away from them. How are you going to influence your, your sons and daughters? How are you going to influ influence your neighbors if you claim the message of the cross, but you're always, you're always camping out, you're always... Uh, 
budding and making piles with those in the word faith camp. Those that are preaching something else. Those that are preaching the Jesus only doctrine. And see, I know that sounds right, but because that sound, the reason that sounds right to you is because you're being more influenced by the distractors than you are the truth. Because once again, the gospel is not a Jesus only gospel. The gospel with power, amen, is Christ and him crucified. It's the cross that makes the difference. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish. They see it foolishness. They may look godly. They may have belonged to a big denomination, be the richest one in town, tallest steeple in town, beautiful stained glass windows, parking lot full of Mercedes. Oh, they're prospering over there. They must be doing something right. No, that which is right is the cross. For the preaching of the cross is what is right. So he said in verse 5, Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God there. The wisdom of God, the knowledge of God is no. The knowledge of God is knowing what we need, and then giving us what we need. Amen. Which is the blood of the Lamb. Amen. When Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, what did God do? Amen. He didn't just come and begin to preach Jesus. What did he do? He came and rushed on the scene with an animal skin that was saturated in blood and placed it upon their shoulders because what they needed was the application of the blood. That's the only place that we can be cleansed. And that's speaking of the cross. There's no washing by the blood apart from the peace that is found, the justifying peace that is found at the cross. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Amen. Peace with God. Justifying peace. Amen. Is through the blood of his cross. Romans 6 and 3. I just read it. Amen. Uh, being baptized into his death. That speaks of the place of the blood sacrifice of Jesus. It all happened there. Amen. We were baptized in Jesus and lo and behold the operation of God through the Holy Spirit cleansed us of all the old. We're brought into Jesus, a new creature, a new creation, washed, cleansed, whiter than snow, whiter than even wool, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Behold, a new creation. There the old is removed and we're brought into the new. Out of the fallen lineage of Adam, out of the household of Adam, no longer fallen sons and daughters of Adam, but we are now redeemed by the blood of the cross. Brought into the household of God. We become heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Everything that God has promised Christ throughout eternity, we become partakers of because of what Jesus there did on that cross. And our faith alone, our faith alone, we don't have to jump through hoops. It's not based upon my performance. It's based solely upon his great and grand performance on the cross. Amen. Where he saved all humanity, at least those that would believe. Amen. And defeated the powers of darkness there. Amen. He hid us in Christ out of the reach of the powers of darkness. The only way the devil can touch us if we get stupid and stick our head up. Amen. Out from where God has hid us in and we've been hid in Christ. Colossians 3 and 3. Amen. Where you are dead. That means you're dead to the old life. You're dead to all the old. You are dead and your life is now, your new life is head, is head in God with Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't think of a greater, uh, a better place to be, to be. That's my refuge. Amen. He's my fortress. Hallelujah. He's my refuge, my fortress, my high tower. He's all of those things that the great psalmist sung about, but it's the cross that opens him up, amen, where I can enter into him by faith. Praise God. You're dead and your life is hid in God with Christ Jesus, amen. We're with Christ. We're seated in heavenly places in him, hallelujah. Praise God. Talking about victory, amen. How to always, we're given this great victory. We triumph always because of what Jesus did at Calvary and our faith in it. 
Verse 5, casting these imaginations down, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, amen, and bringing it all into captivity. Amen. If we don't bring it into captivity, recognize it for what it is, that it's imagination, we gave room for a strange voice, or we might have become that strange voice ourselves. We begin to imagine something that's not according to the Word of God. The Word of God is, the gospel is no mystery. God doesn't work. I, we Strike this from your language. Never say that God works in mysterious ways. God does not work in mysterious ways. God works in the truth. That's what the Bible says, Psalm 33 and 4. For the Word of the Lord is right. And all of God's works are done in truth. And that truth is indeed, make no mistake, that truth is what he done with us and through us through the death of his son on Calvary. That truth that God works in is the same as Romans 8 and 2. Amen. Romans 8 and 32. And all of the scriptures for, for, that, for that is telling us about what God done for us through the death of his son. So he said, take all of these vain thoughts, all of these imaginations, every high thing that's exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bring it in into captivity. If we don't, it'll take us captive and, and, and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Where does God tell us to take it all? Take it to the obedience of Christ. There has been times, I'm going to be honest with you, there have been times something will creep in, something triggered, uh, an imagination, a thought that ought not be there it was triggered by something I looked at, something that I heard, amen, and I immediately, I'm reminded of what Paul said, it's time to take it to the cross, amen, hallelujah, amen, take it, put it under the blood, he said, in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, once again, he knows what we need and he gave us his son on the cross, amen? And that's what we need for everything, amen? There shouldn't be any uh, anxiety in the life of the believer, amen? There shouldn't be any oppression in the life of the believer, amen? We don't need another pill dealing with these things. We just need to put our faith in what Jesus did on Calvary's heel, amen? That's the answer, amen? That's the prescription that the Lord gives us today. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Yoke up with me, learn of me, and I'll give you rest, praise God. I'm the healer. By his stripes, we're healed. We're healed physically. We're healed mentally. We're healed spiritually. Praise God at the cross, at the cross. It's already been done. Let, let your mind be renewed to have the mind of Christ. Amen. And he said, take all of these vain imaginations. Take it all and bring every thought. Everybody say every thought. Every thought that ought not be there, amen, every thought, every imagination, bring it all, what does he say? To the obedience of Christ. Well, what is that? Amen. Well, if you look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, we'll see what the obedience of Christ is. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So you see the answer for all of our ills, every issue of life, Amen. It all, the answer is found at Calvary. Take it all. Bring it to the cross. Be reminded again today. I bring you to remembrance, as Paul said. I bring you into remembrance of my ways, he said. I bring you into remembrance of God's way, his testimony, his power, his wisdom. It's all wrapped up in the Son, Jesus, and what he did at Calvary. The cross is the wisdom of God, the power of God, and the testimony of God. Make no mistake, God's never spoke about anything except what he would do for us through the death of his Son. God's not speaking about anything else today. Amen. He's speaking to us today, you and I, through his Son meaning what he did at Calvary. He broadcasted it live. The great billboard of God was raised up on Calvary's hill on that cross. This is what I'm speaking about. This is what I'm doing. 
come to the cross and live and live in victory both now and forever. Amen. Believe. He's made a believer out of me. Praise God. And I pray to God that he'll make believer out of you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that you saw fit to join me today in this broadcast. Amen. If at all possible, be back with us tomorrow night uh, for the Contending for the Faith broadcast. We'll be going out at 6.30 from the Sanctuary Crossway Ministries. I'm in, I'm in my kitchen right now here at in, in, in our home. And, uh, but tomorrow night we'll be at the Sanctuary of Crossway Ministries. We'll be having church, amen. If you're in there, drive on in and join us, amen. Don't be ashamed of the gospel or those that's preaching it, amen. Come on out and join. Can't drive too far for the truth and church alive. It's worth a drive. What makes that church alive is the life-giving gospel that we preach. Life out of death. No cross means no life, amen. The cross, preaching the cross and you'll find life, amen. Hallelujah. Join us 6.30 tomorrow night right here on Facebook. If you're not able to drive in, God bless you. Love you each and every one.